Today, I hope you're doing grand and all as well in your world. Welcome to another episode of How to Play Like Mr. Peter Green, and today we'll be covering the song Oh Well. And this is a video I want to do for a while and I haven't been able to get around to it. But, um, with the passing of Danny Kerwin, I feel it's time to do uh, this song. Because it's Peter Green and Danny Kerwin's parts in this song, where they work together, are amazing. Especially the runs, which we'll get to. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to teach you Peter's part and Danny's part as well, including the guitar solo, which I'll get to at the end. So, um, and I'm going to talk about the structure after we've learned it. So uh, after we've kind of gone through all the riffs and all the kind of like all the runs and whatnot, I'll I'll talk about the structure of the song because it is a bit of a strange structure. I won't be going. In, I won't be teaching Oh Well Part One because if I was to teach Part Two, we'd be here all year. Um, and plus I don't know all of part two yet, I only know bits of part two. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into Oh Well, shall we? Um, oh, quickly, actually, before we do, sorry, do apologise. Um, the sound you'll be going for here is a, in all fairness, I don't really think I got very close with the intro. Um, but it, it, it's that kind of really clean clunky broken up sound it's it's a very distinctive peter green sound it's a very hard sound to nail down so you want to be running your gain fairly low ideally you want humbuckers the entire song is played on a bridge humbucker so you don't have to go to your neck at all at any point it's all bridge humbucker uh you can kind of get away with a single coil but you need that mid-range clunk that you get from a humbucker really um and you want you want to boost the mids on your amp uh, mids and bass more than treble and lower the gain so gain and treble quite low mids and bass fairly high just to make it really fat and c kind of clunky sounding and but it's got that kind of like brightness i'd say and i say especially with a humbucker it'll it'll work a treat okay so um yeah without further ado let's get into oh well let's start with the uh, first riff okie dokie so um guitar neck in the face ah! Okay, uh, yeah, anyway, moving along, uh, let's get to Oh Well, shall we? Not, no guitar necks in the face. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do with this intro bit, I'm going to break it down into three riffs. So, uh, three riffs. Um, there's one riff, which is this. Which just repeats itself twice. There's another riff that does this. And there's another riff that does this. So, they're the three opening riffs to oh well so let's get start with the first one and peter starts it with a um a rake up on the d a and low e string like that just open and it sounds horrific on its own it's like the stuff of nightmares Die! Ah, 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 freddy krueger's coming to get you it's horrific but put into the context of a riff it sounds really cool so what he's doing there, he's just raking upwards on the D, A, and low E strings, open. And then when his hand comes back down, he plays the low E string. And then we're into the, when, when we're getting into the fretting part. Okay, so the first riff is open E. And then we go to the third fret on the low E. We fret both, uh, play both, sorry. And then it's a pull off on the third fret on the low E. Oh, sorry, I'm actually, I'm, you don't, you don't play, I do apologise everybody, you don't play that, the G note, the third fret on the low E. It's just a, so it's, uh, that's just one pick. It's just kind of like a legato kind of thing, if, if you will. So, yeah, so, 
you rake up all the open strings, and then when you come back down, hit the, uh, the open string on its own, the low E, and then go to the third fret low E, and then pull off on the low E to the open E string again. And then we go down to the A string, and we go uh, open A string first, and then hammer onto the second fret on the uh, uh, A string. Like that. So, okay, let me try and do it one finger. And then we hit the open D string. So, wait. That's what we've got so far. Okay, and then we get this leg. Okay, which is hammer on to the, uh, you go back, uh, after the open D, we hit the A string, ha hammer on to the first fret on the A string, and then pull off, like that, like that, and then we go back to the third fret on the low E, and then we do the pull off again, so, like that. So the whole riff, uh, oh yeah, and uh, to end up with, sorry, you just play an E5 power chord. So it's open uh, open low E and your B note, your second fret on your A string. And what you do is you uh, up pick it like that. It's not down picked, it's up picked. Uh, well, it's up picked for Peter's part, down picked for Danny's. So when Danny joins in on the riff, he actually goes like that, but Peter goes and you can hear it's a lot more aggressive than even with the guitar turned off, you can kind of hear, you know, because you're hitting this B note first, it's just a lot more kind of aggression to it. Okay, so the whole first riff so is, is this. So raking up on those open strings first. One more time, I'll try and do it a bit slow. I'll try and do it with two fingers. It's it's quite difficult, especially to kind of get kind of a stretch, let's say. Okay, so. One more time for lock. Okay, uh, so the next riff is this. So it starts exactly the same as... It, it's kind of like all riffs in uh, the intro kind of thing of... To, oh, well, all riffs kind of pretty much start exactly the same with that. Okay, so the next riff is this. So you do the exact same thing, but when you get to that open D string, you go back to fretting your... Uh, you go back to your A string and you hammer onto the second fret on your A string. And then you fret the D string on the second fret. So. So instead of kind of uh, going to that bit. It's, and then we go back to the big E5. And again, up pick, one, two, three. Like that. So the whole thing so far is this, really, really slow, uh, with the rake on the open strings to start with. You can actually do all the strings if you want, but it's kind of, um, it sounds a little, it's, it doesn't quite sound right. It sounds like Peter's just kind of going from a D string. Like that kind of thing. Okay, but I could be wrong. Uh, okay, so, uh, so yeah, let's try the riff really slow with two fingers. <laughs> And then we go back to riff one. And then riff three is this. Which is this. And you start, yeah, you know, it's exactly the same. So we do the exact same thing again. And then we get, when, uh, once you get to that open D, you are going to be fretting your second fret open, uh, on D string. 
So. And then we go to open D string again. Yeah, just making sure I got it. I'm getting it right because when you slow things down, things no longer sound like the song. It gets really weird. So uh, yeah, so the, the last riff. Let me let me try and play it really slow, and then I'll then I'll because what you're doing is kind of so open D, second fret D, then uh, open D again, and then you go to your second fret A string, open A, third fret on the low E. Uh, second fret low E string, and then, and then to the E5 again. What? Try and do it one. Uh, try, I'll try and do the rundown with one finger. I'll tell you what, this is a lot harder to teach than I. And I thought it would be. It's actually quite difficult. So, but I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing there. So, uh, so that's all the riffs. So the whole thing, really, really slow, is this. <laughs> Do it one more time, really, really slow. So again, breaking up with the open strings to start. Okay, so I think that's the fiddly part out of the way. Phew, it is really, that's really kind of, that gets... When I'm slowing that riff down, it because it doesn't sound anything like the song, it get, that's really hard to figure out. Okay, so that's the first three riffs, and they reoccur uh, throughout the song. That's kind of like the main theme of the song. Okay, so the next um, part is this. Which is very easy. So what you're doing is you're hitting your low E string and the fifth fret on your uh, A string. But yeah, it's like a passing note. So what you're doing is droning this low E string, so to say. So you're hammering on from there to there. So fifth fret to seventh fret on your low on your A string, sorry. With that low E string droning. So and it's a lot again, a lot of up. Uh, picking a lot of like uh, strumming upwards, no real down pegs. And then what you're doing after that is just scratching the muted strings. That's that's what Peter does there. While while Danny does the, uh, Peter's just going. So it's. the important part, that hammer on from the 5th uh, fret to the 7th fret on the A. But again, it's the up picks that make this, because if you down pick it, the low E string dominates uh, the A string. And it's not as loud, whereas if you pick upwards, the A string is a lot louder. So hopefully you can, kinda, hopefully you can hear that. So... That's part kind of two, so to say, of oh well. And after that, after that many times of the, and then you go to the scratch, you come to the. And I can't tell in this riff if Peter's droning the low E string while playing that. I don't think he is because it sounds quite messy, so I don't think he's doing it. So let's teach you a bit. Uh, let's, let's do this next riff. So it starts with the 
fifth fret on your A, and you hammer onto your seventh fret on your on your A. Then you go to your fifth fret D, and then you go back to your seventh fret A. Then back to fifth on the A and seventh on the A. So fifth and seventh in the A. Fifth on the D to seventh on the A, and then back to the fifth on the A to the seventh on the A, and then you do that two low E's at the end of it. So So that's for the next riff. It, again, fairly simple. It's not as complex as that bit. Oh. So the whole thing so far, up to this point, and we'll get into the that bit in a sec. So the whole thing so far is this, really slow. So after that many times, after that part, we get this. So it's hammer on from the fifth to the seventh on the A again. And then go to the, your uh, fifth fret on your D. Back to the seventh fret on your, a, uh, on your A. And then you go to the seventh fret on your D. To the seventh fret on your A. And then you go to your 8th fret on your D. And then back to the 7th uh, on the A. So it's... You got a nice flat 5. <laughs> so... So you're always resolving to that E note on the A string. I'm really slow. Okay, so that, that, that fits in. Like that. And then we get the first run. And there's three different types of run, which I'll teach you now. So the first one is this. Which is awesome! I love the, I love the sound. Of it. So we start off on the third fret on the low E, fifth fret low E, sixth fret low E, seventh fret low E, uh, and then we go down to the A string, five, six, seven, D string, five, seven, uh, and then we go to ninth, then we go to the uh, go down to the G string, seven and nine. So it's I do it one finger. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, good gravy. I mean, that is, that is just so cool. I love that. And especially played at speed, if you, um, you know, which I'll do in a sec. So the whole thing, the whole shebang so say the whole intro of oh well is this really slow and i'll tr i'll try and do it with two fingers so because uh, i can see it's kind of hopefully my hand isn't getting too much in the way hopefully you'll be able to kind of still see what's going on so let's try and do it django ryan art style and do it really slow so <laughs> Thank you. 
and my fingers would have a hard time with that run, just doing it with two. It's a lot easier with more. It's a lot easier when you can kind of roll. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's the whole intro of Oh Well. Uh, just Peter's part. Like I said, I will get to Danny's part in, in but a moment, but at this point in time, let's just focus on Peter. Okay, so, um, so that's that. When Peter comes in again after the first singing part, um, but don't ask me what I think of you, I might not give you the answer that you want me to. Come back into the exact same red. <laughs> This time, you don't do this. You just go to... But, it goes shorter. It only does it three times. And it also does this. Oh. Which is a different run altogether. Yeah, okay, so, uh, so yeah, so it's only, uh, so you do this, twice, and then you go to, and then you do this run, which is like a stripped down version of the first run, basically, so you start on your third fret on your low E, fifth fret low E, sixth fret low E, seventh fret low E, f uh, and we go down to the A string, five, six, seven, and we finish up on the 10th fret on the A string. So it's... Oh, sorry. It's a different rhythm as well, you can hear it. It's kind of more staggered, so to say. So... Okay, so that's the second run. That's the second time. That's, that's like the second time you play the riff. That's what happens there. So I'll do it really slow. So that's the second variation of the intro run, basically. And then there's a third one as well, the ending one, which is kind of the same as that one, but it ends differently. And, I'll, and, and we'll get to that when we get to the end. Okay, so the next part is the guitar solo, uh, slash kind of middle bit. And it's really hard to hear exactly what Peter's doing here. Because, again, what he's doing, well, in the first part, because um, he's, droning, he's droning the low E string again, and it sounds like he's doing this. <laughs> Kind of a backwards blues thing. Instead of going that way, you're going. So it's very strange. And the notes are you drone in that low E string all the time to make it as big as possible. And you start on your seventh fret on your A, and then you go down to your fifth fret uh, A string, fourth fret A string, second fret A string, and fourth fret A string. That's like the first one. So it's like... Okay, and then the next riff has another variation which sounds like he's doing something like this. Which he does... That. It, it's really... It's kind of open to interpretation and it sounds to me like he changes it every time apart from this one that's that's kind of definitely there but the next one seems to kind of like he seems to mess around with it so that's the first part of the guitar solo the second part of the guitar solo is we go to these chords so the first one is this open e string uh seventh fret on the a uh fifth fret on the a on the d and then your G, B, and E strings are open. It's the Green Man Alishi chord. So after... Go to this 
chord. And then we go to this chord, which is an F sharp over D major. So uh, it's um, ninth fret on the A string. You're not playing your low E string here. You know, but you're not playing either E strings. Your high E and your low E are dead. And your first finger wants to bar the seventh fret on the D, G, and B strings. So from you go to that, and you can. It's it, you know, it's, it's kind of the start, if you will, of part two. Oh well, part two. But again, we're not going to talk about that. So, so the whole thing, uh, fairly slow. The guitar solo rhythm part is like this. End on that, that e, that e chord, but kill it like that. Okay, and after that, we are into verse two singing wise. So we've got uh, the first kind of riff all the way through, and then you got the first singing part. Then you got the second riff that's slightly altered and shorter, and then you've got the guitar solo after the cowbell. And then you've got the second singing part now, where it's like, when I talk to God, I knew he'd understand. Uh, and again, the, the same same thing at the end, you know, I might not give the answer that you want me to. And again, just the intro riff. But this time, we do come into this bit. And this one isn't shortened. And the end riff is this. So that's it. So and that's the whole song. That's whole uh, oh well part one. And this end run is exactly the same as kind of like the second variation, so to say, but it doesn't end on the tenth fret on the A string, it ends on that green Manalishi chord. Okay, so you start off on the third fret, fifth fret, low E, uh, so uh, third fret low E, fifth fret low E, sixth fret low E, seventh fret low E, uh, going down to the A string, five, six, seven, and then you go to that chord to finish on. And really hit it. And that's it. That's Peter Green's parts for Oh Well Part One. So the whole thing, I'll do it. I'll do it at speed and I'll do it slow. So the whole thing, including it, well, actually, I'll do. I'll do the whole thing full speed because we'll be here forever if I don't. So the whole thing is this. So from the beginning all the way through. <laughs> That's the, at the end of that first thing, it's just the, it's that green man I should call it again. So that's the first verse. Might not give you answer, they want me to. Second uh, riff. <laughs> Only once that time and then into. Then into. <laughs> That's shortened, and then into the guitar solo. It's the cowbell. Then 
Dun, 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 dun. Now when I talk to God, I know he doesn't stand. He says, stick by me and I'll be your guiding hand. But don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to. <laughs> And that's it. That's Peter Green's part of Oh Well, part one. I hope that made sense. I really, 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 really hope that made sense. And you can see that. And that was played in order with all the right parts. So the first time you do that riff twice. That happens twice before you go into the that bit. And then the second time you start that riff after the first singing part... You only do that riff once before you go into the the shortened main riff. And then you get the guitar solo, uh, which again is kind of four of each. So you get four. So that's one, that, that's, that, that's two. That's four. And then you go into to the front of a four. And then you get the other singing part. And then when you come into that final time with the riff, you do that just once. And then you go into the that bit. And then after that is into the riff again, which isn't shortened, the main riff. And then into the shorter run with the end, big ending chord. Okie dokie. So, um... That's Peter Green's parts. Uh, that's that's all it is. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing with my right hand as well. With Peter's parts, like I said, there's a lot of up picking going on. There's not a lot of down picking because that's Danny's kind of uh, bit, so to say. So, um, which I'll get to in a minute, and I'll talk about where Danny comes in and what he plays, and we'll, then we'll talk about the guitar solo, and that'll be that. So let's move on to Danny's parts of Oh Well. Okie dokie. So the first part that Danny comes in, well, the mo most part of what Danny comes in with is just kind of bits here and there on the riff. So when Peter's going... <laughs> I've messed that up, but you know what I mean. It, he comes in on the two, the, the second time and the fourth time, so to say. But on the intro, Peter goes round an entire one on his own before Danny comes in. Danny comes in with the bass, and they come in with that first riff. <laughs> And stop. And then. So you're kind of missing out that kind of second time, so to say. So first verse, first time during the song, you get. Uh, you, you, you get to. Uh, it's just Peter on his own. And then the second time coming into that, you join in with Danny, uh, as Danny. Uh, and then stop. And then you join on that bit. And then when Peter goes to the... You go down here to the 12th fret and do a double stop on the G and the B string. Which is there. So as Peter's going... You're not playing anything until he starts going... So he's... And it's just... And then the next time is... Third time... And you don't play anything. And then you come in on the riff, and you're playing the higher octave riff. So instead of... You're playing it here. So it's 7th fret on the G... And then to the ninth fret G. And then you go down to your 8th fret on your B. And then resolve back to the ninth fret on the G. I hope this is making sense. I really hope this is making sense. I'm terrified. I'm, I'm, I'm completely confusing everybody to death. Um, okay, so yeah, that's the octave riff. <laughs> So 
So, the whole thing so far is this. So, this is Peter. Which is this. So you hammer on from your 7th to your ninth on your G string. Then you go down to your 8th fret, B. ninth fret, B, uh, G. 10th fret um, on the B. Back to the ninth fret, G. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I went wrong there. So yeah, 10th fret on the B to the ninth fret, G. And then you go to the uh, 11th fret, B. Uh, yeah. God, sometimes. Um, to the ninth fret, G. And again, you're always resolving to that E note, which is now on the G string. Next octave up. Okay, so... That's what you're doing there. And then you get this run. And this run almost pretty much harmonizes Peter. It's not a direct copy. It's not a direct kind of octave run with Peter. It's totally, it's pretty much totally different. It's kind of got harmony notes in it. It starts on a major third. Okay, so you go down to the 14th fret on your A string. Then you go down to your D string, 12, 13, 14. And then you go down to your G string, 12, 13, 14. Then you go down to your B string, 11 and 12. And then you go down to your high E string, 10, 11, 12. So. And that's the first run. And you can, you can hear that. It's ridiculously cool. Again, with Peters. Okay, so, where are we? I'm just trying to keep track of where we are. I don't want to get, get absolutely lost in confusing parts. So that's the first riff. That's where you come in with Danny's parts, and that's where the bass comes in as well. And that's what Danny's playing during the... stop peter does the <laughs> big chord and that's where you stop okay so that's danny's first part danny's second part in the next time around is um is this okay it's just dawned on me i have made a mistake and i do apologize for this in the intro um peter goes round once <laughs> on his own but the second time around, at the start of that riff, Danny actually joins in and goes through the whole thing with him. So I do apologise on that front, everybody. I really do. That's that's that, that's mine. That's me forgetting and then remembering and going, oh dear. Okay, so yeah. So at the beginning of the song, Peter goes round one. And once he gets to that bit, next time around, Danny joins in. Um, if you want to play Danny's part, that's where you come in. Okay, so where are we? So yeah, we got the da -da 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 -da. so after the first singing part, uh, Peter does the first riff on his own, and then Danny joins in on the, and then he stops again and lets Peter do the, and then joins Peter again on the. So if you were going to number it like one and one to four, so one being da 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 da, number two being da 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 da, then number three being the same as the first, and then fourth being the rundown, you're playing on the two and the four. 
So you're doing. But again, it's not. That's the thing is when you're playing that riff, you down pick it for Danny. Not up pick. Peter up picks, Danny down picks. There's a, uh, there's a lot of thought gone into this song. So, so you join in on the. And the. And then back to the. And then up to the. Um, and then your next run is this. Which is exactly the, and that's the outro run as well. So what it is is 14th fret A, and then you go down to your A, uh, D string on the 10th and the 13th, and then uh, G string 10 and uh, no sorry I do apologise, A string 14, A uh, D string 12 and 14, G string 12 and 14, uh, B string 12, and then you go to your high E string 10 and 12. So, okay, and that's also the riff he ends on, and that's all of Danny's parts. That's all of it is again. Oh yeah, and um, and I'll, I'll talk quickly about what happens during the last riff. Okay, so after the uh, second singing part, after I might not give you today, want you to, uh, Peter does the first two on his own. Oh, hang on a minute, my amp's off. And then uh, Danny comes in after that. So he joins in on that those last two times around. And then Peter goes to the... Which means you, as Danny, go back to the double stop on the 12th fret. Uh, and Danny does change this every now and again. But it, and if you want to change it, you just want to be thinking E minor pentatonic, which I'm going to talk a bit more about in the guitar solo in a minute. But mainly, it's just that double stop on the G and the B string on the 12th fret. And then into... For the outro is... So when Peter hits that chord, yeah, you as Danny are hitting this chord, this note. The high E. And that's all of it. So, so let's just, uh, so let me, I've got to say, this is a lot more confusing and complex than I thought it was when I first started the video. But, um, so there, uh, let's talk about Danny's parts quick again, um, before we go into the guitar solo. So, intro starts, one time around, Peter on his own. Then, um, Danny comes in, uh, all the way through with the... <laughs> And then when Peter goes to V, you go to that. And then the riff. Which is the long riff. And then your first run is. Look at the guitar, Dave, it might help. Um, so that's that's the first thing. That's before the first that's basically like the first run through before the first singing part. And then uh, the second time around, you you Peter does the on his own, and then Danny comes in with stop for the, and then you come in, in on the rundown, and then he comes into the shorter main riff, and then it does the. Okay. And then you get the guitar solo, which I'll come to in a sec. Uh, and then last verse after the second singing bit um, is Peter on his own for. And then Danny comes in with the. And I can't get my head over the, the down picking for Danny because I'm used to playing Peter's bit. So, <laughs> I, so just have to imagine, but Danny. On those, he down picks and Peter does your pick. Okay, so, uh, and then for the outro. Is... And they also have the double stop in there as well. Okay, so that's it. That's Peter Green's rhythm parts and Danny's rhythm parts. So let's talk about the guitar solo. 
The guitar solo comes out of E minor, and he mainly sticks to basically B minor box. That. He doesn't really go outside it at all, if at all. So what he starts a guitar solo with, and he comes in at a strange time, and there's also something else I'll talk about in a minute about the riff, which I'll talk about, because uh, the riff is actually off beat. So, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But the guitar solo starts with a cowbell. Da -da 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 -da. And then, it, then Danny comes in with And you'll be able to hear it anywhere on the recording. He starts with this unison bend. And it's quite fun to make your own soul up in the style of Danny, which he's got a lot of this... A lot of crazy vibrato, a lot of really heavy handedness. But it's really it's really important to start on that unison bend. So your first finger must be on the twelfth fret on your high E, and you want to be bending up the fifteenth fret on the B string. So ba -ba -ba. like that. So uh, as the guitar solo comes in. That's a run that Danny does. So it's 14th fret on the A, 12th fret D, 14th fret D, and then G string for uh, 12th, for, uh, 14th fret on the G, and then you bend all back. Went that one, and then you got this. So you bend up the 15th fret on the B. And then you finish on that high E bend. And Danny Cohen having that mental vibrato. And that's why he finishes on. I'm just, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to like mess around in that, in, in that kind of, in, in trying to kind of like channel Danny Kerwin style there, but you, it kind of ends up with this riff. So it starts on your A string on the 14th, down to your D string, 12 and 14. 12 on the G string twice, and you end up on the E note on the D. Then ding, 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 ding. So uh, out of the cowbell, ding, 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 ding. And there's some little made up bits in there that I just did, you know, and it, it is a really cool little fun bit to just soul over, but it's got to be really simple and really to the point. There's nothing crazy in that. <laughs> You know, and like I say, it's just improvising in the E minor pentatonic, so. That's all Danny's doing. He's just kind of like, you know, because he does change it. I've, there is different versions very well where Danny changes that solo. But he always starts on that unison bend and always finishes uh, in the recordings I've heard of him going. And they're like stock phrases just to kind of keep him, you know, know where he kind of is, so to say. And, and, and also because it's such a short period of time for that guitar solo, um, you know, it, it kind of keeps him. He, he, he's in kind of a box, so to say. He can't do a, you can't do a great deal. And uh, so what you do has to really work and say something and it's just really that that riff though. really really cool okay so that's the guitar solo covered that's all danny's little parts covered um with his octaves and his different runs to peter's runs and that's peter's parts done so i think that's everything so the final thing i want to talk about and if i have missed something out i am very 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 sorry because you know when you have that feeling like you forgot your keys? Or did I lock the car? Did I lock the house? I always have that feeling. I've got it now. Like videos. Like, I've always missed, have I missed something out. 
So the final thing I want to talk about is how the riff feels. Because there's a real feel to this riff. It, it, and it's really important. It's like... Is that moving the camera? Damn. I was hoping it was going to move the camera, but it's not. But, um, I mean, it's really hard to kind of... Um, I don't know if I can, I don't know how to do it. But the riff, it, the, the <laughs> is off beat. And then uh, when, it, when but it's off beat until <laughs> when it falls into, uh, falls into time, so to say. So this riff, <laughs> it doesn't come in like one, two, three, four. <laughs> it doesn't do that. It, it, it's, it's off beat. It's really hard to kind of like, and this is what throws, quite a few people out and 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 it's quite weird because up until that the whole song guitar parts are off beat to what's going on so um how can i do this how can i do this how can i sh how can i i'm gonna try and tap my feet and hopefully my foot not oh is that the is that the WH ten to the rescue? So I'm gonna what I'm gonna no, I can't do it out of foot. I'm gonna try and tap my foot and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. So I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll turn the guitar off and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. So what I'll do is I'll play the riff through once and then I'll start tapping my foot and you'll hear where the beats lie. And you're gonna hear that off beat to the actual riff. So in time. Hopefully you'll be able to hear that foot tapping because that's really important. That's, and that's the feel of the song. It's got a swing to it. You know, it's got a real bomb, it's got a real roll to the feel of it. And that's really important. Like mega, mega important. I can't, can't over like overstate how important that feel is in the, in this in this riff and this song. So you've got that kind of um check check and check and check and check kind of feel going on. You know. And that's what gives it its bounce. That's what gives it its feel and in it, its kind of um groove so to say. So that's really important. So always bear that in mind until you get to the until you get to that bit, bear in mind that those, that kind of like, you know, riff one, and then those, those two parts are off beat. They sit off the beat, and then they fall into beat when you get to that. So that's really important, because that's that's what gives it its, its, its swing, so to say. It's what gives it its kind of vibe, so to say. So hopefully that makes sense. And um, I hope I haven't missed anything. I've covered... All for Peter's intro riffs. I've covered the next part and Peter's and his runs. And I've and then there's the guitar solo bit which I've covered. Sorry, I'm just mental checking everybody. And then I've got Danny's parts where he comes in, where he where he doesn't play, and where he comes in. I've covered like what to do in the solo. Like I say, it's just E minor, but always start with. <laughs> that because you need that impact and get it right um it's not a double stop either that's me, that's me being i mean you could always do a double stop if you want to danny doesn't though i don't think but anyway and for danny's solo you gotta dig in really hard like you know let the guitar have it just really hammer the guitar uh and also yeah i spoke about danny's little Danny's runs, which are totally different to Peter's, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Um, and they harmonise, and that's what gives it its sound. But again, like the feel of it is really important as well. I say with that, with that kind of swing, that kind of offbeat thing, it's really, really important. So, yes, that is everything. Um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about part two. <laughs> Uh, 
as that's pretty much all I know of it at this point in time. Maybe one day I'll teach part two, but not right now. My brain is fried. My ribs hurt from this thing digging into me. Ow! Um... And my brain is like, I've missed something, I've missed something. So if I've missed something, I really do apologise, I'm sorry. Uh, but hopefully I've got everything. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson on Oh Well. I hope it's made sense. I hope, uh, you know, you, there, there's some things you can take away from it. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to, yeah, this video is dedicated to Danny Kerwin because we lost him recently. And it's a massive loss. Another massive loss for the guitar community. It, it can't be, again... It can't be understated how important Danny's guitar playing was to flute, early flute with Mac. I really can't because it really is incredible. And it's just sad the way things went. It really is upsetting the way things went for him. And he's just one of those, one of the best guitarists that the UK has ever produced, Danny is. And it was just a little bit too short lived for its own good, his career. So, same as Peter. So, yeah. Um,. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it's made sense. And I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Um, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, everybody. Goodbye now. I'm off to put a ice on my ribs. Ah, I'm in pain. And uh, cry. I'm not going to go cry. If I've missed something out, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, yes. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Again, goodbye now.